Hello and welcome to 24-7 Sports Live. I'm Cooper Patagna alongside Carl Reed and Smoke Dixon. And guess what? we got quite a show for you today, the 24-7 Sports Fantasy Mock Draft. And guess what? We're going to put on our GM hats. Each of us is going to pick. We're going to have 11 picks, 33 picks overall, really simulating the first round of the NFL Draft. Here are the rules. Like I said, 33 picks, 11 each. We have drawn names in a hat before. Call Reed. You will get the first pick. I'll get the second Snake or Smoke will get the third. Like I said, Snake Draft, Smoke will have consecutive picks. We'll go through that order. We're not picking for the teams, right? We're picking for ourselves. So you're going to get a little bit more of a uh, personal flavor here as we go through the Fantasy Mock Draft. And the other thing, we are using CBS Sports prospect ranks throughout this entire Fantasy Mock Draft too. Carl, you got the number one pick, man. How are you feeling right now? Any pressure? I'm feeling like a winner. You know what I mean? I'm feeling like I got the best overall group of guys that I'm going to go out, and I think that I'm going to outmaneuver you guys today in this draft. Smoke, what do you think about that? I just want to make sure that he doesn't keep glancing on this paper and looking at my draft picks, <laughs> trying to make a trade with me. No trades today with you. And if I do have a trade, I'm going to have you pony up everything. Well, if I would have copied the answers to your paper, I wouldn't have qualified academically. I would have ended up having to go to JUCO. <laughs> I think we're going to be all right. So let's get it started. We'll get the clock. You'll see the clock in the background. One minute. For each pick, we'll give some one-liners, have some thoughts, some good conversation along the way. But Carl Reed, the number one pick in the draft, you're on the clock. Who you got, my friend? When you pick the number one pick in the draft of the National Football League, you want a guy that you can put in a position for the next decade, and you know he's going to be a all-pro year in and year out and probably end up in the Hall of Fame. That's what the number one pick should be. And so for that, I'm going to go with Ohio State wide receiver <laughs> Marvin Harrison Jr., I expected a little drama, all right? So uh, everybody is assuming Caleb Williams is going to be the number one pick in the NFL draft that is just around the corner. Why Marvin Harrison Jr. here to start your team and not Caleb Williams? I'm going to go Marvin Harrison Jr. because I think he's going to be a Hall of Famer. I think he was the best collegiate player this year in all of college football. I think he's the most impactful, and he's the most ready to go contribute to an NFL team right now. Like I told you guys, when you go number one, you need a franchise guy that you know can go right away. And I don't think any of the quarterbacks are guys that I can say for sure in 10 years, I think they're going to have Hall of Fame careers. Well, in order for a receiver to get the ball, you got to have somebody to throw the ball to him. And I guess he just wants you to get somebody to walk around and just say you have the best franchise quarterback maybe we've seen in a long time. I mean, did y'all work something out that I didn't know about that y'all going to do a trade later on? No, I think that I, kind of, I'm going to do what most people should do. I'm going to address the quarterback position later in the draft. All right, let's okay. see if you got a plan. All right, I got pick number two, and at pick number two, I'm not wasting any time here. I'm going to turn that card in for Caleb Williams. Here's the thing, Carl, where I come from with Caleb Williams, USC. This was a guy that was chasing points. USC, one of the worst defenses in college football. Only LSU gave up more points under Matt House last season. You think about it. 41.8 points per game. It was not pretty. USC was a big letdown, especially with the expectations going into the season with the Heisman winner returning. But he kept them in a lot of games. Smoke, you said it. You think he's a franchise guy. I think the production was a little bit of a downtick last year, but the good thing is he took care of the football. He's going to have to improve from the pocket, but I love his ability to extend plays, his uh, ability to improvise as well. He's got a little bit of magic to him, so... We've all thought, right? It's a good quarterback draft. You got Caleb Williams, you got Jaden Daniels, Drake May. I'm sure we'll hear those guys' names called very quickly, but I'm going to go with Caleb Williams there at number two. Smoke, you're at number three. A couple quarterbacks on the board. What are you doing here? Well, we all understand, except one person, that when you start in a franchise, you need a franchise quarterback. <laughs> Quarterbacks win games. We understand that. So, with all that said, I'm going to go with the Heisman Trophy winner, Jaden Daniels, LSU. Now, if it wasn't for Caleb Williams, this guy could be the number one quarterback in any draft. But for this draft, he'll be number two. This guy can play from the pocket, play with timing, anticipation, make accurate throws, and got one of the best deep balls in this draft. And when he puts his foot in the ground to scramble, fellas, he can hit his head on the goalpost. Not any time, but every time. So this is my guy that's going to lead the Smoke Squad franchise to a winning Super Bowl. I like the way you use your words, and I love the way you're trying to trick our audience today when you say that you need a franchise quarterback to win games. But when I looked at the college football playoffs, neither one of the quarterbacks you picked 
were in the mix in any of those championship conversations. I do think that Jaden Daniels is a great athlete. I think he's going to be exciting to the fans with his legs, the way that Lamar is, the way that Allen Iverson was in basketball. But those guys typically come up short in the month of December. Let me, let me holler at you real quick. When you study film, I mean, take away the prototype and, the, and what you think that this quarterback is because he's dual threat. He plays from the pocket. He gets off script when needed. He's not the guy that's going to get the ball and run around and he has to run just to get production. Neither was our guy, Lamar Jackson. That's just the way that they made him play. This guy can play just like you want him to play. Winning football from the pocket with the opportunity when he needs to get out and make plays with his legs. I haven't seen that on tape the way that you, that you guys have. Not in winning moments. Not in key games, guys' ability to throw the ball from the packet. You talked about Lamar. We saw what happened in the playoffs. We saw what happened in college in some of those bigger games. You know, I understand that you want an exciting pick. You want to sell tickets. So I'm seeing the way that you're going with your team. I'm trying to win the championship. I just know just that keep, has, Just keep studying me. In he this has track. two receivers that's going to go in this draft as well, too. I just want to know who, get, who got him the ball <laughs> if it was the running back. All I know, this is going to be a really good conversation to come back to. Somebody's going to look really right somebody probably going to look really wrong who knows we might split the difference on this smoke i mentioned you had the number three pick you got your franchise quarterback you also got the fourth pick who you got here we got to get a guy that's going to make the quarterback feel good about himself and last year we watched the super bowl we saw travis kelsey patrick mahomes winning combination so i'm gonna go with the guy that no one's talking about in this draft brock bowers maybe the best football player in the sec if not hurt he gets into that conversation of Heisman Trophy. Inline blocker. Matchup issues for anybody that wants to put a linebacker on him, not good enough, can't cover him. Safety on him, he knows how to get open. And when he catches the ball, his rack run after catchability, like no other. This is a three-man fantasy draft, so there's a lot of flexibility, and you can take your liberties whatever you want. Let's say, hypothetically, real world, and you've been on the other side, Brock Bowers, right? There's this conversation of, I don't think anybody's pushing back on what you said. I think he's one of the pound for pound, arguably a top three player in all of college football over the last couple of years. He's proved that. Positional value, where does that kind of come into play? I know this is early. Like I said, this is a hypothetical exercise. But in the NFL, I know a lot of teams think very highly of Brock Bowers, but how much does the tight end conversation kind of weigh into that? Well, the tight end com conversation is, it's just like a receiver. You can't even look at him anymore. It's just a tight end. They are just positionless type guys because you can line them up. It's an X, a Y. You can line them up in the slot. And an inline blocker, you have another offensive lineman that can help you in the run game. So you're getting two for one special right here with your tight end position. And the last couple of years we've seen it's been tight ends been dominating when you get to the playoffs. It's colder. Coverage outside. Quarterback needs some, uh, a safety blanket. That's your tight end right there, working zone, understanding man. And that's just connection that I want to have with my franchise quarterback, franchise playmaker, touchdown guy. Red zone counts. I love your pick with Brock Bowers. Elite tight end has been elite from the moment that he stepped on the field for the University of Georgia and has played in two national championship teams and has been the best player in many of those moments. So I don't think you can go wrong with Brock. And even if you got a guy that you miss on at quarterback, he can save them with his ability from the tight end position. Two quarterbacks off the board, two pass catchers. I'm up at pick number five and uh, familiar with this guy. I'm going to go with Roma Dunze, University of Washington. Obviously a guy um, you know, that I had a hand in recruiting at UW from Las Vegas, Bishop Gorman. He's had a tremendous career and a guy that's really excelled under the tutelage of Jamarcus Shepard now at Alabama, especially playing uh, in Kalen DeBoer's offense. You think about him, 6'3", 212 pounds, ran 4'4", 5", he was sub 4'1", in the shuttle. Dynamic athlete. I think he checks all those boxes. I think he is the strongest pass catcher in this class. What I mean at the catch point, I think vertically as well. Love his playmaking ability. And this is why I like this exercise, right? You got Caleb Williams, a guy that likes to get out of the pocket, really kind of create plays. I think this is a guy down the field those two can make a lot of magic together. So excited about that pairing. Carl, you kind of set it up for me. I got Caleb Williams falling in my lap. I'll take Roma Dunze right there. 1B to Marvin Harrison Jr. I'll give you the slide edge. But Carl, you're up at number six. What are you doing here? When you build a football program at any level, you have to build it from the inside out. 
So we want to go offensive line here with Olu Fashanu from Penn State. Olu would have been a guy that had he went into the draft a year ago, would have been a top 10 pick a year ago. A franchise offensive lineman that you can plug and play, and that position is going to be taken care of for the next decade, which is what I keep telling you what you're looking for when you're drafting guys this high. A guy that has all pro capability, elite at pass blocking, elite in the run game, very special football player right here. I'm going to go with the big fella to build our trenches. Carl, you, you know you could have just gone back and got these two guys from the same high school, Gonzaga High School. You, you know that, right? You could, you could have ponied up this draft and got two teammates to play together, but you'd rather go this is a, This isn't a class reunion. All right, Carl, let me, let me ask you. When it comes to Fashano, this is a deep tackle class, right? You've got guys like J.C. Latham, Joe Walt. Fashano uh, would be the first tackle off the board here. What was it about him that you felt – Say, all right, this is my guy at this position. I felt like he had no weaknesses. I feel like he can he can run block in both the zone scheme and the gap scheme equally as well. And most guys are only good at one or the other. I feel like he can do both. The play of the running backs solidifies that he can do that. And I thought he did a great job pass protecting for some mediocre quarterback play at times when he had to give guys a lot of extra time against some very elite edge guys. I think he played against a couple edge guys that gave a lot of guys issues that didn't give him any issues. All right, Carl, a little Big Ten flavor for you. You got Marvin Harrison Jr. You also got Olafashano. Now you got pick number three coming in at pick number seven. Back-to-back selections here. Who do you got? Well, I'm going to go with the guy who had, who was the prize of one of the early transfer portals and who showed kids that if you bet on yourself, you can end up in an elite situation like this. And a guy that I've been following for a long time and that I've got a great relationship with, Jared Verse. I'm going to take Jared Verse here for a couple of reasons. Number one, I know what he's made of because I know him personally. Number two, I saw the way that he competed and how bad he plays and how hard he plays when he wants to win a football game. Not only is he a great pass rusher, he can get after the quarterback, you can also count on him in the rundowns to stick his nose in there, to squeeze and hold the edge and tackle running backs. I think he's the total package. A lot of conversations on is he better than Dallas Turner. I think Dallas Turner is also an elite edge guy who can rush the passer. I give Jared a slight edge against the run. If I'm looking for a total ball player, I go with Jared first. I think he's the best of the best. Yeah, Jared more complete guy um, than, than Dallas. But I, I agree with you. When I was at um, Vanderbilt, I tried my darndest to get this guy when he got into the transfer portal because you saw the skill set that you can't quantify with anything other than just understanding football, how nasty and how much he loves playing the game. From first snap to the last snap, he's going to give you 110% of effort, attitude, and he plays to the echo of the whistle. Like Most guys stop on their first mm-hmm. pass rush. He's throwing second, third, fourth moves at you, and he'll wear out most offensive linemen. I like that pick, Carl. Mm-hmm. About time you got something, right? Like it. Maybe the best story in the NFL draft, when you think about Jared Verse, his path, he starts out at Albany, unranked as a recruit. I think Florida State finds him when they're going through advanced scouting against Syracuse, Albany and Syracuse. He gets in the portal. I mean, from game one, right, two years ago when they faced LSU in New Orleans, that was a guy that was going to make a difference. So Jared Verse, also we had Lance Zerline, NFL Network analyst, on the recruiting podcast. He came in and said that Lance Zerline, or excuse me, Jared Verse, reached out to him to get feedback on his scouting report going from his first season in Florida State to his second, trying to figure out where he could get better. He had a huge combine ending in Indianapolis, probably going to be a top 16 draft pick. All right, for me, setting up now at pick number eight. Smoke, you know about this. I think it's all about best player available at this point, right? we got 11 picks. you got to make them count. I'm going to go with another receiver. I'm going to go with Malik Neighbors, right, another Louisiana guy at LSU. When you think about the receivers – that have come through LSU, especially recently. You think about guys like Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Odell Beckham, you go down the list. They are one of the best programs in the country when it comes to producing top-tier talent at that position. Guess who is the career receiving leader at LSU? That is Malik Neighbors, right? And you think about what they have done over the last two years, Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, and I think about the team that I have right now, how to build it, right? You talked about the offensive line. I'm sure I gotta address that a little bit later. But I got Caleb Williams, a guy that likes to get out of the pocket. I got a guy down the field vertically and a big frame receiver in Roman Dunze. Now I got a guy that can really live in the short to intermediate that I think is the best run after catch option in the NFL draft. I love Malik Neighbors. I think this guy's going to be a top 10 pick. 
I think this guy's got all pro written all over him. Exciting dude. Can't wait. I'm kind of excited about my team here. Coop, you got some good picks. But right now, I see your quarterback running around the pocket. You better find somebody in this draft who can help him stay up. Right I'm going to fix it on. soon. It's a deep draft, so we'll get to that in a second. All right, Smoke, you're up. Number nine. You got some needs, too. It's still early. What do you like here? We all got needs, but I'm going to make sure that your needs get taken care of real, real quick and get your guy hurt. So, after careful thinking... And going back to the combine and just some studying and going back to the, to the homeland in Tuscaloosa, I'm going to get an Avatar character. This guy's wingspan is like 6'11". Came out and ran something crazy at the combine. And when you see speed to power and edge, ability to bend and get to the quarterback, I'm going to go with Dallas, big game, Turner. Roll, tide, roll. Love you know, it. Almost had a seven-foot wingspan coming out of American Heritage. I mean, you think about the guys that have come out of that program. Brian Burns being another one who just signed a, what, $150 million extension over five years with the New York Giants. Nice little sign and trade for him. Smoke, in your opinion, is he, is he the best pass rusher in this draft? He is the best pass rusher in terms of being able to go to speed to power with length. And if he doesn't get to your quarterback, and give you that long arm and make that pocket real, real dirty. But for me... Number one pass rusher um, in this draft. In terms of getting home, right? I think Jared Verse, I mean, we had the conversation, probably the uh, most well put together in terms of being able to play the run as well. Dallas Turner, certainly the most upside uh, there as well. And you think about Alabama, the guys that they have had, Dallas Turner, or excuse me, obviously Dallas Turner, the year before Will Anderson, the number two pick in the draft uh, with the Houston Texans. So I those guys just keep producing. I think that Dallas Turner is the best depending on what scheme he plays in. I think Verse can play in multiple schemes because of his size and his ability to play against the run. I still think he would be effective pass rusher, even if he was playing a five or a four eye in a 30 front versus a 40. And so, but Dallas Turner is super explosive off the edge. I also like the pick because I think as you do advanced scouting, I think that guys who played in big time high school programs like Turner did, followed by college programs that teach you how to be a pro, I think you're going to find consistent play over the years with guys that have been groomed to win and produce from the very start of their careers. Dallas Turner has the ability to become a high teen sack guy in the NFL. Now, is he a situational pass rusher his first couple of years? Probably so. But we understand on third down, you've got to get to that quarterback. And the number one position in the world that everybody knows, the 99.9% .9 of the world knows, is a quarterback. So you've got to get a guy that can affect the quarterback coach and Dallas Turner can do that um, at a high rate. Premium position checks all the boxes. You mentioned one of those rare guys you can take inside the top 10 still has his best football ahead of him. Smoke, you got back-to-back -back picks here. Dallas Turner at number nine. Who you got at number 10? So when you're building a team, you got to have a quarterback that can get the ball to the playmaker. On defense, you got to have a guy that can get to the quarterback. But also you got to have a guy playing behind that pass rusher. So the pass rush and the coverage ties hand to hand. And I know most people won't see, look at this guy just because he's coming from a max cool school, Quinion Mitchell. I'm going to go with him just because he has the ability, he has size, speed, sticky coverage ability. But my number one thing for corners in the coverage is when that ball is in the air, can they get the ball back to the offense to score? He came in, he ran a 4-3-3 at the combine, 6-1 length, ability to play off coverage, play press, instincts, ball skills, and size. You can't go wrong with this guy right here in terms of ability to play football on the outside. Now, Smoke, I think it's important. You pick this guy over some guys that are going to get picked later in the draft from some blue blood schools, from some power five guys. In the transfer portal era, how does a guy like Quinion Mitchell, who stays at Toledo, get himself in this conversation? He didn't go on the portal and go to some bigger schools when he had the opportunity. Can you, you can still go high from the MAC? Oh, no doubt about it. Um, when, you, when you think about guys that come from the MAC or guys that come from schools that aren't blue blood schools, they understand that they have to craft their game and develop their game on their own. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with those blue blood schools, I hated saying it, but they coach the instincts out of you because everything becomes so technical. Mm -hmm. There's a side of raw playmaking ability that you want out of that position of cornerback. And mm -hmm. I always say it's almost like an animal with its instincts. Mm -hmm. If you bring a lion or a tiger at home mm -hmm. and you tame that animal, 
and then you put them back out, they can't hunt anymore. It's just mm -hmm. like a corn. If you take some of those instincts away from them, saying, hey, on the third step, plant and drive. No, this is an instinct position. Mm -hmm. Go out, if he moves, cover him. Wherever he goes, you got him. If you put his left leg in the ground, you put your right and go get it. Mm -hmm. And staying at Toledo at the Mac school, you saw some rawness out of him, mm -hmm. but the raw is good because he's owned it. Mm -hmm. And he's become more of a complete player just with time on task. Mm -hmm. Senior yeah. Bowl crushed it. Going to be interesting to see. Carl, I like that question. I think the other thing Smoke just talked about, you know, it, with these players, whether it's group of five, whether it's a guy like Jared Verse uh, transferring from the FCS level to the FBS, obviously playing uh, with a power five program in Florida State. The Senior Bowl, the Shrine Bowl, these postseason events that are now all televised, right, through the NFL Network, so on and so forth. They're huge exposures for these guys. We talk about it all the time in the rankings process for us. It's the equivalent, right? Really, ultimately, at the end of the day, these guys, their last audition, pair that with the NFL Combine. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that's how they boost their stock, make their money. And Quinion Mitchell gets to go good on good, right? In Mobile for a week, get to show his stuff. Jim Nagy, his crew, doing a phenomenal job there in Mobile. All right, pick number 11 for me. Guys, I got some options here. And like I said, I'm a little worried about my guy, right? He had some offensive line issues at USC. I got two dynamic receivers. But I think at some point, we're going to have to protect this dude. I'm going to go with the left tackle. I'm going to go with Joe Alt out of Notre Dame. Started 33 games for the Irish. And Smoke, I think you and I were talking about this. You took Brock Bowers off the board. That was a guy that I kind of asterisked. I think this guy, next to Brock Bowers, is one of the safest players in the draft. And I, and I love this kid, everything about him. And part of that is, yes, because of the experience, Yes, because he's a prototypical left tackle, exactly what you want. The other part of this, how about this? His dad, pro bowler in the NFL, his brother, NHL hockey player too. You think about the genes, you think about the competitive temperament, checkbox, checkbox, after checkbox. I need a guy that's going to be sturdy. He might not be the most sexy, but I think he's going to be the most effective at the end of the day. I love this kid. I'm glad he's here. Needed somebody to protect my guy's blind side. I love this pick because he's a tough guy. He comes from tough DNA. He played tough football. The great in run blocking, really good as pass blocker. I agree with you here, Coop. I think this is an excellent pick, and you're going to need him. Coop, whenever you're looking at the first round uh, you, and you're looking at a, guys, that you want to make sure that they're clean. And when you go through it, you check all the boxes. You just say clean, clean, clean. Not great at everything, but he's going to stick around for 10 years and get the job done mm -hmm. for you. Solid pick. I like that. Need a good need a good football player at the end of the day. All right, Carl, pick number 12. I don't think you got a quarterback yet, man. You, you got to get an arm. You know, when you guys were talking about quarterbacks earlier in the show, I was, I was really perplexed um, by some <laughs> of your evaluations. But I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to fight you guys. You guys are normally on point. Um, but you, you missed a little bit today. When we talk about <laughs> quarterbacks, you guys talk a lot about running ability and escape ability and all of this. But you want to know what the most important stat is on a quarterback? That's winnability. A guy who is a state champion as a high school quarterback, a guy that transferred to IMG and was a national champion in high school, and a guy that just helped lead his college football team to the national championship, J.J. McCarthy, quarterback from the University of Michigan, who all he does is win, 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 put J.J. in, and that's really the way you got to go. You got great ball players around him. He has the ability to lead locker rooms that have strong personalities. He proved he can do that in both high school and college. He has been coached at an extremely high level, having been able to play for a perennial state championship program at Nazareth Academy in Illinois, went to IMG and received very high-level coaching from Bobby Acosta, a, a guy that comes from the Noel Mazzoni family tree, and obviously getting tutored by Jim Harbaugh. This kid is special. He's nothing but a winner. He's going to be able to really help a franchise, special, special football player. Look at Jay you McCarthy. justify the quarterback position. All this time you've been over there taking notes. I like that. But J.J. Mack, I, I like this guy, Carl. Uh, you know, a lot of people think that all they did at Michigan was just turn around, just hand the ball off and play power football. But when needed to throw the football, go back and watch the national championship game, you watch the game against Alabama. He was hurt the majority of the year but just kept on pointing. But he does throws with timing, accuracy, more athletic than people give him credit oh, for. much more. And in my stack of quarterback, he's number three. Mm -hmm. 
Good pick, man. About time you start listening. I like that. <laughs> I think the conversation that's probably happening in NFL draft circles right now with a lot of these front offices that need a quarterback is J.J. McCarthy, a guy you win with or because of, right? Is he a needle mover at the end of the day? You brought up the CFP, right? When they needed a big play to happen, J.J. McCarthy was that guy. When they couldn't run the ball or when the defense was starting to show some leaks, maybe there a little vulnerability in the second half or late in the first half of that national championship game against Washington. It was J.J. McCarthy that they called on. So certainly a lot of people uh, pushing J.J. McCarthy, I think, to the top of their draft board. Going to be pretty interesting. Michael Penix, Bo Nix, it seems like those two are kind of drifting back. And J.J. McCarthy is a guy who's surging. Carl, you got back-to-back picks. Just at number 12, you got your quarterback. Who you got at number 13? We got explosive offenses and quarterbacks all over the National Football League multi-dimensional receivers who can do different things, guys like Tyreek Hill that put a lot of pressure on defenses. You need guys on the back end with a multifaceted skill set, guys who can cover the roof of the defense, can also line up in the slot and cover guys and participate in the run game with all the RPO stuff that's going on. I'm going to go right here with Terry and Arnold, defensive back, University of Alabama. I was impressed with them all season. I was also really impressed with the way that he was able to take some very hard coaching from Nick Saban that became very publicized. Most guys smoke, you know, run away from being coached like that, and he ran to it, and he honored it, and and he really bought into what they were trying to teach to make him an elite player. He's going to be a great player in the National Football League. Smoke, you're, you're part of that prestigious fraternity that got to play defensive back down there uh, at the University of Alabama. I know you like this kid a lot. Tell me why. I love him. Just because his ability, his, first of all, before you even cut the film on, you sit down and you talk to this young man. His mental toughness and just I don't care attitude because I know that I'm the best. And regardless of what situation that I'm in, I'm going to win. When he goes into a room where he walks up to your first conversation, he lights up the entire room and he brings energy to the conversation. Mm-hmm. Confidence, energy. And then when you check, go on the film, Lad McConkie couldn't be covered by anybody. Go back to the SEC championship game. He was glue on him. Mm-hmm. Inside, outside, tough as nails as a tackler. Mm-hmm. And when there's opportunity when the ball is in the air, gets it. Only thing that held me back a little bit from taking him as my first corner he ran that 4-5. I know he can run. I know he can play. But you just said the cheetah. Cheetah can roll. Yeah, he can roll. If you can't roll, you can't roll with the cheetah. So that's what helped me back a little bit from it. But in terms of the number one corner, he would be 1B for me. Also great personality. Funny enough to be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> He's extremely funny. He can, he can get a Netflix special. He's a Bama guy. What you expect? There you uh, go. Uh, Come on. To be continued. A <laughs> little, little love for Terry and Arnold can do it all there. All right, pick number 14, yours truly on the clock. We talked about offensive line help, right? I went Joe Alt, last pick. I got neighbors. I got a Dunze. I got the generational talent, some may say, Carl. I'm going to go with Talese Fuaga, Oregon State. I think another guy that's kind of surging up the ranks right now. I see right tackle. I think ultimately at the end of the day, he can play right tackle. He can play guard. I got Alt on the left side. I got Fuaga on the right. 33 and a half inch arms. I think that kind of shows up a little bit strong at the point of attack, though. Really good feet, reactionary athlete. Now I feel good. I got my bookends on the left and the right side. Got to protect my asset in Caleb Williams. When you cut the film on, Coop, you see tough, hard-nosed bully ball. He takes men from the line of scrimmage somewhere on the second level. And Most men and off this spot. He plays with an edge and an attitude as I don't care. And whoever's in front of me, I'm going to try to knock your face off. You can't do any much better than that when you want to talk about offensive line. Mm -hmm. Inside and outside ability. That's exactly right. Inside out, that's how I'm building my team. All right, Smoke, you're back on the clock. Number 15, who you got here? So, you know, I, I, I like getting a little hometown DMV love. And I got my man Dallas pass rush turn on one side. And I know you just got your offensive lineman. Now, one thing that I, I know about your offensive lineman, he struggles with a little speed. So the fastest edge player in the combine was Chop Robinson. Beep, beep. Look around, he's getting to your quarterback. Now, we understand that you just picked a quarterback. You just got an offensive lineman. I had to go ahead and just double back and get you with an edge rusher that's going to make you guys a little bit scary on third down because you know that's a down that wins. I like Chop Robinson. I think that he was aided by the creativity of Manny Diaz on defense and his ability to get him 
matched up, you know, in the right matchups all the time. I know that you don't agree, you know. I, I disagree so much. But I think this is an excellent football player, but I think we got to give Manny Diaz some credit, too. Right. Yeah. Manny Diaz, was Manny with Chop in high school? No. Saw, the, saw the same thing. You saw ability to come off the ground about that low, get to your quarterback, burst, speed, explosiveness. I don't think Manny has anything to do with that. You're giving that coach a little bit too much credit. But we shall see What's when that? Mr. McCarthy is on his back by chop, chop. Chop him up, baby. We saw that already this football season. I don't recall him being on his back. You don't recall chop, chop having any edge presence? Last season, we will watch. We can watch the tape together later. You don't got to watch that. Just watch the board when he comes off. He just did. <laughs> Check it. Smoke, it, it, I feel like he's one of these guys, obviously highly touted coming out, um, a guy that you're really familiar with coming out of the DMV in Maryland. It, you feel like he's got another level to his game that he hadn't reached yet? I do. Just because every year you just saw Chop is getting better, better, better. And he's understanding how to pass to us. Right now he has one move. Mm -hmm. Dip, rip, and go. Get him with an older guy. Get him in the locker room to understand how to pass us, how to set guys up and get a counter move. He could be a 19 to 20 sack guy. Whoa. High expectations, Whoa. but a lot, of, a lot of love for the young man. He does have a lot of ability. I think it says a lot because he had never, I think it's fair to say, he hadn't reached his full potential yet. And this is a guy that, quite honestly, could go top 20 in the NFL draft. So a lot of meat still left on the bone. Boys, we're going to pick up the pace here a little bit. Rapid fire, smoke. Back-to-back -back picks. You had 15, Chop Robinson, number 16. Who you got? I'm going to go back home to the, to the land of pass blockers. I'm going to go with J.C. Latham. In the same category, your, your guy, big, thick, man mover with the ability to protect. When he put them hands on you, he shocks the life out of you. J.C. Latham, tackle, protecting my assets. Love it. I love the pick. J.C. Latham, excellent an offensive lineman. I was hoping that I was going to be able to get him later on, but, you know, I forgot I was up here with an Alabama guy. I mean, you think about IMG Academy, what they've done on the offensive line. I mean, you think about J.C. Latham, Evan Neal, uh, Daniel Falalele as well with the Baltimore Ravens. You kind of go down the line. Tyler Booker at Alabama seems to be up next. Uh, they've done a tremendous job when it comes to offensive line development. J.C. Latham certainly going to be a guy figures to play a long time in the NFL at the offensive tackle position. All right, 17. Smoke, you were joking earlier about the hometown flavor for me. I'm going to go with another guy, Leatu Latu, uh, that we recruited at University of Washington. Neck injury, ends up coming back, transfers to UCLA, gets a clean bill of health. And you talk about a guy that really made himself some money over the last two years playing for Chip Kelly and did a tremendous job. Akaika Malloy, a defensive line coach, went from UW to UCLA. They tapped everything out of him. And this was a guy that was a national rugby recruit coming out of high school out of uh, Jesuit in Sacramento. I love this kid. I don't think he's got quite the upside as maybe some of the other guys that we've talked about when you mentioned the likes of Jared Verse and the likes of uh, Dallas Turner and Chop Robinson, but Le Leatu Latu in terms of a mature game, that's what he's always had. I love his ability against the run. I think he can give you some pass rushing upside as well. So I love him. You know, I think the theme here, last couple picks, high floor guys, guys that can contribute immediately, you know what you're getting. So. That's who I got at number 17, Carl, to end round six at number 18. Who you got? When you're building your offensive line, people look at the tackles because of the elite edge guys. You also need big guys that can play on the interior of the offensive line, and that's what Jackson Powers Johnson out of the University of Oregon is. He's a people mover, can block the three-tech or the one shade. If I brought him in here with you two guys right now and left $20 on the table, he would walk out with both of you in one arm and $25 in the other arm. That's how tough of a guy this guy is. You just, every, you just questioned my toughness. 20 bucks on the table and I can't get it from a big guy that can't He's going to come out with $25. <laughs> And you and the other one. I love this love kid. It. And guess what? We recruited him when I was at Oregon. You know, and this was a guy that quite honestly, throughout the evaluation process, Smoke, you know how this goes, there was a little bit of hesitation, not so much in the player, but when you recruit a center that can only play center, there's a little bit of yeah. uh, some concern there. That being there said, Jackson Powers Johnson did a tremendous job, actually played a little bit of guard early in his career, uh, and then moved inside to center. That center position is so much about the disposition, the competitive temperament, and the intelligence, the football intelligence of that 
uh, players. So much is put on them, uh, obviously from the calls at the line of scrimmage, the relationship they have with the quarterback and the rest of the offensive line. This is a guy that can do it all. I think ultimately at the end of the day, great pick. I think this is a guy who can anchor an offensive line for a very, very long time in the NFL. Guys, we are halfway through our fantasy mock draft here at 24-7 Sports. So we're going to do a quick recap of our teams. Here you see Carl's 2024 fantasy team. A little bit of a shock at the top. Marvin oh, Harrison man. Jr., so the number loaded. one pick. But he feels pretty good about I'm it. Oh, Fashanu. J.J. McCarthy gets his quarterback in the fourth round. Pretty good value there. Now we'll go to my team. Caleb Williams falls into my lap at number two. Little home cooking. Roma Dunze, Leatu, Latu. Get my tackles with Joe Alton, Talisa <coughs> Bulaga. I feel really good about Malik Neighbors as well. And here's Smoke, the Heisman Trophy winner. Jaden Daniels, also pound for pound, one of the best players in all of college football. Brock Bowers, Dallas Turner, J.C. Latham. A little SEC flavor there. Nothing wrong with that. All they do is dominate the NFL draft year in and year out. And here you see the best available prospects remaining on the board. And guys, the name at the top, Drake May. There's only three of us, right? So if there was a fourth, I would assume that Drake May would be off the board. But we have a pretty interesting storyline emerging with the NFL draft coming up. You got three quarterbacks that I think a lot of people think have a pretty good chance of going in the top five of the NFL draft. Now, we have come out of this with three quarterbacks ourselves, one being Caleb Williams, the other one being Jane Daniels, and the other one being J.J. McCarthy. I don't think that's so unrealistic of a situation. I find it hard to believe Drake May will fall out of the top five or even the top ten. But Smoke, let's start with you. What, any concerns about Drake May or even in the conversation when you're sitting there having that hypothetical conversation with yourself? Jaden Daniels or Drake May, what made you maybe lean into one more than the other? Well, I let I, I lean more to Jaden Daniels just because I don't have concerns in terms of decision making. There's some interceptions that Drake May, I'd have to sit down and have a conversation with some of those mind scratching turnovers. And they didn't have a lot, but some of them you just looked at and like, why did you throw it there? And what were you trying to get to? And then when you, when you check his accuracy overall, there's some balls that he throws, there's some dirt balls that he just, it just gets away from. You know he has arm strength, you know he has size, you know he's athletic, but there's some concerns for me in terms of decision making and some accuracy um, questions that I have that he's just not as clean as the other three guys that I would have in front of him being J.J., Jaden, and um, Caleb Williams. Checks every box in terms of his throwing ability, the look, the, the physical tools, but just some head-scratching losses during his career at North Carolina, and I always have to pay attention to that. Games that when you have a guy like him, you're supposed to win because you have him, and if you're going to draft a guy high in the first round at the quarterback position, you better get that type of production. And I'm glad you touched on that because every quarterback has a story, and you want to find out, can they get through adverse times? When has this guy ever faced adversity? I haven't seen it. I would have loved to see it and him to just jump through that window of adversity and survive that fall. Whether it's D.C. at number two, whether it's the Patriots at number three, it's going to be pretty interesting because you mentioned it. I mean, you took him. That's your quarterback, J.J. McCarthy, right now. Seems to be a really hot name. Would not be surprised if he continues to climb NFL draft boards. All right, let's get the second half of the mock draft starter. Carl, you're going to lead us off at number 19. Who you got? Well, when I think about the corner position, you know, and, and what happened this year at the University of Missouri, there was a lot of talk about some of the offensive guys that made some big plays in Cody Schrader and Luther Burden. But Ennis Rakestraw and what he did at the cornerback position, he choked some key receivers out over the course, and he had a great, great postseason so far in terms of what he's been able to do in workouts and things. Um, Columbia, Missouri this year, Smoke, was a place where receivers came to die. And he was one of the Grim Reapers. I'm going to go with Ennis Ray Straw. I like that. that I like that pick, Carl. Mm -hmm. Solid, solid pick. Can do it at the line of scrimmage, off the ball, and like you said, clamps on receivers. I, I got a question for you. Why every time I say something about a Missouri guy, you make a face like that. Or I just, don't make a face when you talk about Alabama. Guys. Or just drop is my it, head. Is it because I'm from St. Louis? No, because it's St. Louis every time. And well, if it's ever close or either far away, it's Missouri. Well, you know, today is also 3-1-4 day, by the way. And it'll always be St. Louis versus everybody. I will say this. 
I think we're all guilty on this set, right? You got J.J. McCarthy, always been your guy. You got Rake Straw here. You got Chop Robinson. I got a Dunze. I got Malik mm. Neighbors. I got Latu, right? There's a little personal flavor in the NFL mock draft. What would it be, right? Mm. A little bias towards the guys that we know pretty well. I will say this, Rake Straw, last thing on him. I went to the NFL Combine, Indianapolis. You talk to athletes first, people around there, good football people on that side who have worked in the personnel world. They have Ennis Rake Straw. They think this guy is a dude. They think he is a super clean prospect. That's the guy. And they, they represent a lot of really good football players. I asked, I said, who's the guy that's standing out to you? It's Rake Straw. So it's going to be interesting to kind of see where he fits. Nate Wiggins, uh, a couple other names out there in the defensive backboard that we haven't talked about. Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama as well. We'll see if Rake Straw is one of those guys that ends up being maybe cornerback number two or three, uh, depending on where he goes in the NFL draft. All right, I'm up at number 20. Carl, I think I'm going to stick with the defensive back uh, theme here. I'm going to go with Cooper DeGene, Iowa, right? And this guy is one of the most dynamic athletes in the country. I love his ability. You talk to some NFL teams about Cooper DeGene. They like his ability at the line of scrimmage. I think that's ultimately what he's going to be, a nickel safety, kind of that star position. I think he can match up with those bigger body receivers, tight ends as well. I think he's better, more forward-facing, closer to the line of scrimmage, playing downhill than he is with the back uh, towards the quarterback. So, I love the versatility. I think this guy's a ball player. I'm kind of trying to stick to that consistent theme of just getting good football players that have position versatility. This guy screams it. It doesn't. It, every year, there's somebody from the University of Iowa that has been developed into a pro, one of the best programs in the country in terms of developing guys for the NFL. And if you ever get an opportunity to visit there and kind of see that development program, I think it's really special. Great football player right here. Better athlete than people give him credit for. And you, like you said, you got to find guys that win matchups. And you can put him inside, outside, all over the place. And he finds ways to make plays. Defensive chess piece there. All right. I needed that guy on the back end. Smoke, you got the honors. Pick 21 in 22. What you doing here? So when you go this late in the draft, we in round seven, you're just trying to get your best athlete that can just do it all. And you still need guys to cover. You need three corners. The cover. It's not two man anymore. It's three man. So I'm gonna go with height, weight, and speed. Athlete Nate Wiggins, Clemson. Mm. He went to the combine and tore it up. You just see, you just see athleticism dripping off of him with some coverage and some sticky ability. Nate Wiggins, Clemson. All Clemson right. Back. Like that pick, 21. You got 22 as well. What you got here? Right. We're gonna finish it up. So when you go back and you watch the film of any receivers in the SEC. There's one guy that just never got covered. Everyone thought he was a 4-5 inside Hunter Renfro type of guy. Nah, my man Lad McConkley is a speed burner. 4-3, right under six foot, clean routes, explosive out the cuts, fast with route running ability and can catch the ball and playmaking. I'm going to take my man Lad Glad right here and ask one of you guys to cover him up. I love this pick for you because when free agency opens up, he's going to be on my team because you didn't get him somebody who can throw him the deep ball. I think those who know, know when it comes to Lad McConkey. I think he's one of the best players in, in college football over the last two years. And I think Georgia was, quite honestly, a different offense without him yeah. in it. Kind of dealt with the lower extremity injury and, you know, that – Put a lot of pressure on Carson Beck to take that guy out of the offense. I think Lad McConkey's one of those guys right now that it might be a surprise on draft day, but is really feeling pretty confident about being a, a day one first round draft pick and a guy that's going to be able to contribute right away. All right, next pick for me, number 23. How about this? Another surprise, right? Troy Fatano, University of Washington. And I've said it, guys. I'm kind of building the offensive line here. I got my left tackle. I got my right tackle and Fuaga. I think Troy Fatano can do a lot of different things. I think he can play left tackle if you need him. He's 6'4", he's 310 pounds plus, he's got 34 and a half inch arms, and he's an elite athlete. Volleyball background, really good foot, body quickness, really mean, nasty, can get up in the second level. I think he can play in a zone or power scheme. I love this kid, and guess what? A little bit of a late bloomer at Washington, but it's really turned it on in the last two years. Offensive line unit that won the Joe Moore Award. He really showed up against Texas in that CFP. I mean, you think about those guys in the middle, right? Tavondre Sweat, Byron Murphy. That's a really active and athletic uh, defensive front for Pete Kwiatkowski there in Austin. So I love this kid. And uh, obviously, I'm trying to protect Caleb Williams back there. So 
two guys on the outside that I feel really confident about. That and you got Fatanu that I feel like you can move around a little bit. Cooper's trying to play bully ball in here. I like it. He, <laughs> he has, tried, yeah. yeah. He got some tough, hard nosed guys. <laughs> at some point, you got to score some points, but it's okay. Keep playing bully ball. I got Malik Neighbors, Roman Dunes, and Caleb Williams. I'll be all right there. All right, we'll keep moving on. Uh, Carl, number 24, who you got? It's a guy that I've loved for a long time, Amarius Mims, offensive lineman. And then if he can stay healthy, you know, which some people have questioned, but if he can stay healthy, he's going to be a great player in the league for a really long time. Really good offensive line prospect right here. I'm going to go with him at 24. You know, Georgia offensive linemen, they kind of scare me a little bit. Because they look good, they test well, but they've kind of just been up and down. And it's really not of their ability. It's when they get into the, in, in your team, more motivation to play. Like guys strike out. But, and I heard them sitting around talking about food, getting on the 340. I just didn't see like a nose, watery, fiery guy just wanting to knock somebody's face off. So the, the national championship is not impressive? Yeah, that's a team win. Oh, We're talking about an individual player right now. I'm just asking. It and seems, I didn't see it. It seems, you know, is it a little Bama bias there? It seems a little, you know. A lot of accusations being thrown around. We got Bama bias. We got Missouri bias. It's all, it's, all, it's, it's all over the place right now. All right, Carl, you got Mary Smith's number 24 and number 25. Who you got? Well, you want to go with a guy who is is twitch twitch. Xavier Worthy. What he ran at, at the 40 in the combine. And I got opportunity to talk to UNLV offensive coordinator Brendan Marion, who was his receivers coach at Texas previously. And he says, even though he has that kind of elite speed, he can also run the entire route tree. So he's a guy that I think is going to put a lot of pressure on defenses when you can run the way that he can run. Has to be more consistent catching the ball at times. He had some drops early in his career, but he improved on it. His speed is going to separate him in the National Football League. Scary guy, Carl. A, a receiver that's this fast mm -hmm. with the ability to put foot in the ground, change mm -hmm. direction, and separate. Mm -hmm. But like you said, hands catching, a little bit up and down. He'll scare enough people that he can mm -hmm. body catch. But an explosive guy like that with speed, he'll scare the heck out of you, man. Make you back up a lot. Fastest man in NFL combine history with a 4-2-1. I want to know how much money that 40 yard dash made him. And I would love to see it because he probably went from a guy that was probably in that top 40 range now mm -hmm. probably working in to that top 25 conversation. So Xavier Worthy, a name to know, especially on NFL draft night. All right, at number 26, Carl, you got Xavier Worthy from Texas. I'm gonna stick with that theme. I'm gonna go with Byron Murphy. And I'll tell you this, I was going through uh, the draft board a little bit, looking at some names and I said, all right, I gotta refamiliarize myself with Byron Murphy. I turned on that tape and I'll tell you what against Alabama. Godly, man, this is one of the most exciting players that I've watched. And you wouldn't think that when you got a guy that's sub 6'1", hovering around 300 pounds, but he's mm -hmm. so explosive, ran 488 at the NFL Combine. He also had a 33-inch vert as well. Dynamic player. And you talk about guys that are so equipped with playing with a really good base and foundational technique as well. So explosive, can win with quickness, can win with his first step. He's got great hands at the point of attack, can move people. But his ability in space... Lateral change of direction for a guy that size is pretty rare, pretty uncanny. So he's a disruptor. And I think out of all the kids that I, I kind of watched, this was the dude that I was like, all right, if he's on the board and it's good value, I'm going to end up taking a swing on him. I got him at number 26. Feel pretty good about that. Phenomenal pick in round number nine. A guy that can affect the quarterback from the inside with just get off, power, and like you said, quickness laterally. You go back to that Bama film and any film that you want to cut on, he jumped off, mm -hmm. and you just looked at him and was like, man, who is he, and why is he in the quarterback face so much, and he's yes. making his pocket and his quarterback life pretty hectic. Mm -hmm. He's a dude. He's a home wrecker. All right, so last two picks, two Texas guys. Now we have pick number 27. Smoke, who you got? Well, we'll keep the rivalry going. You guys made me shuffle my board a little bit. I got enough time, right, Kamish? So I'm going to go ahead and select Tyler Guyton, mm -hmm. offensive lineman. Super athletic, got some, he's a little bit raw, um, didn't test that well at the combine, but you see the skill set that you want at the tackle position. Feet, balance, body control, has to work on getting his, his hips down a little bit more to take on that power rush that your man's going to try to give it to him. Mm -hmm. 
But in terms of making a guy run the hoop, can make that happen, get to the second level, I just want to see him play a little bit more nastier. But for where we're at right now, protecting my assets, I'm going to go with Tyler Guy. This is, a, you know, my favorite part of the exercise is kind of late when you get 28, 33. And the, and the reason I say that, it's often the most difficult part of the rankings to do when you're trying to figure out, all right, who the last five or six five star is going to be? Because mm -hmm. guess what? Maybe one through 25, you got a pretty good feel. And a lot of these guys are really, you know, um, good box checkers. You go down the list and there's guys that you don't have a lot of question marks about. Then you got to you have to find a flaw to live with, whether it's inexperience, guys haven't played, whether it's a lack of production. Maybe there's one trait that you wish was a little bit more explosive, dynamic, a little bit more fast. I think we're kind of in that range now with that neighborhood. Tyler Guyton, really interesting story there. Smoke, you got back-to-back -back picks. I mentioned interesting picks. I think you got one up your sleeve here. Who you got at well, number 28? Well, you know what? I like good football players that can play. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to go ahead and take your man, Darius Robinson, mm. out of Missouri. I know you love that, but I'm going to give you why. Powerful. Can do it. Can pass rush from the inside and outside. And when you go to third down and sub packages, you can line them up as a three technique, like you like your man Byron, to give that quarterback a miserable pocket and make everything dirty. Play on every down. I don't got to take him off the field. Great football player here. You won't get an argument from me. Can do it all. Very versatile across the defensive line and a guy that a defensive coordinator can use in a lot of situations. I like your pick here. Missouri, that. Yeah, Missouri pick feels a little personal late in the draft. You know, you're going to steal one from Carl. Now's the time to do it. <laughs> All right, now at number 29, a little personal for me, I guess, but I need some corners. Smoke, I'm going to go with Kool-Aid McKintree. You know, I like this kid. I think there are some areas of his game that you could probably point out and say, all right, maybe I have some concerns how they translate to the next level. Shade under six feet, but... A guy that's technically refined, played three years at Alabama, started three years at Alabama. That's a very difficult thing to do. We talked about the path to the field for Terry and Arnold. Really, at the end of the day, these guys are hard to find. I think physicality-wise, there's an opportunity for him to ramp it up at the next level. He's going to have to prove that. But in terms of one-on-one, man-to-man, I like his ability on an island. I think this is a guy. These guys really a crapshoot when you get into this area. But if you can find a guy with the clay, to give you that man-to-man -man ability, whether it's on the field or boundary side, you got to take a chance. Good football player. Like you said, physically you like everything that he got. I'm just going to have to test him every now and then, Coop, and pump that deep ball at him and see if he can handle my, uh, my receivers on the outside. But solid pick. Can't Fair. go wrong with a Bama guy. Fair enough. <laughs> Carl, number 30, who you got? So, once again, a direct going to the defensive side of the ball. Offenses are playing so many multidimensional ways. You still late in the playoffs are going to have to be able to stop the run. I think it's important to have good linebacker play. So I'm going to pick Chris Braswell from the University of Alabama, who's going to give you really, really high level play at the linebacker spot. Bill Parcells always used to say, you can never have enough linebackers. You better collect them. Another DMV product. They must have something up in there in that water. Well, so you look at it, you got tough, relentless, Pass rusher, can set the edge whenever you want. I know everyone said everything about Dallas Turner, but when you cut the film on, this young man showed up. Mm -hmm. And he played snaps on first down, second down, and third down. So he showed you the ability to do it all. And you can move him around in a lot of different spots on the defense. All right, gentlemen, we're getting into round 11, which is the last round. So each of these will be our last pick. So you got to make it a good one. Carl, you got pick number 31. The honors are yours. When you... Building a defense, and you, you obviously you got to be able to defend on the back end with the secondary guys. You want great linebacker play. You want guys who can rush the passer. But you need a monster in the middle. You need a man who can stop the run and who can demand that a double team be taking every play. I'm going to go with Texas defensive tackle to Vondre Sweat, who can do all those things. Big, strong, athletic can, can two-gap if needed, can play in a two-gap or one-gap gap scheme, and he's going to demand a double team every single play. He's going to be a really good football player in this league for a long time. Big year for Texas, right? I mean, when you think about it, Tavondre Sweat could go top 32. You think about Byron Murphy, it seems like he's cemented his status as well. Xavier Worthy, like this is where Texas should be, right, in terms of recruiting this top-tier talent. Steve Sarkeesian obviously doing a great job coming off. Uh, a CFP appearance as well. Smoke, what, what do you like about Tavondre Sweat? 
you know, going into the draft process, everyone was always worried about how big he was going to get. Can he keep his weight under control? How athletic is he? He showed up to that combine and ran that 40 and went through his test. Everybody mm -hmm. just looked and was like, oh, just leave him alone. Mm -hmm. But that's always going to be his issue of being a big guy. Can you get more than two downs out of him? Because he showed you some ability to pass us in terms of just being a, a man that can pick somebody up and make that quarterback move off of that launch point, seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. But his cardio and just his desire to play football is always going to be questioned just because you've heard rumors and you've heard things coming out of Texas of how he goes up and down in his weight and his cardio. But on film, you didn't see a guy that mm -hmm. took many plays off. It's a balancing act, right? You get this part of the draft, right? It, it's one of those things, like we talked about, not everything's going to be perfect. That's why you're at the end of the first round. All right, I got pick number 32 here. I'm looking through my board, and right now, like BPA, right? That's what, kind of what you're thinking. Who's that guy out there that can maybe reward you if you take a shot on? I go down the list, and I saw this guy play in person. Also, he's from Covington, Louisiana, so I got to give him a shout out. But I love this kid, Edrin Cooper, man, Texas A&M, and uh, a guy that just flies around the football. Got to see him end of the season in Baton Rouge against LSU. I love the way he plays the game. He plays so fast, but sometimes a little bit too fast, right? O can over pursue. I think the frame sometimes uh, in between the tackles can be a little bit of a concern, but he is a physical player that has some knockback to him as well. I think he can utilize him off the edge as a pass rusher. Also love him, speed and space. That is the name of the game, right? We talk about all these guys with all the ingenuity, guys like Caleb Williams getting outside of the pocket, Jaden Daniels as well. Who's going to be the guy to spy those guys ultimately at the end of the, end of the day? You know, I talked about Cooper DeGene earlier, his versatility. I love what you can do with a guy like Edrin Cooper. What I like about Edrin Cooper, went to Texas A&M in, in a loaded recruiting class and another loaded class that came behind him, and he pulled himself above the fray and ended up being the best guy out of the bunch. He's multidimensional at linebacker, can run like Cooper said and make tackles in space. I love guys like him that compete no matter what the circumstances are. And he did that throughout his career at Texas A&M. See ball, get ball linebacker. That does not need to come off the field at any point because he has, like you said, ability to play the run, coverage ability. And when you blitz him, you can get to that quarterback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep it simple, stupid, right? Sometimes you just got to put your best athletes on the field. That's certainly Edrin Cooper. All right, Smoke, you have Mr. Irrelevant here, if you want to call it, at number 33. Whoever you pick is not going to be Mr. Irrelevant in this year's upcoming draft. But who you got? So we got my two corners outside already. And we know this is a passing league. Everybody wants to say they run the ball, but you just run the ball to run the clock out. Kamari Lasseter, physical, inside, outside, competitor, sticky coverage ability. And like I said, my corners are all six foot on up with the ability to run, catch the ball, tackle you in space, but can match up wherever I need them. I like puzzle pieces. I can just go ahead and fit them in wherever I need to. Now, some people don't believe that they need a quarterback early or they need to throw the ball to win. They can run the ball and play wing T football. But us smart guys on the other side know that this is a nickel sub package defense and that you need athletic men outside on the back end and the front end that can get to your quarterback, get to who you're throwing the quarterback to, and get them on the ground. Smoke Squad wins again. A lot of high hopes for the Smoke Squad coming from Smoke. So uh, 33 picks. There you have it, guys. Let's take a look at the recap of each team. We'll start with Carl Reed. I mentioned Marvin Harrison Jr. at the top. Here's how he fared in the second half of the draft. Enos Rakestraw, the name that kind of stands out there. Also, Xavier Worthy, Tavondre Sweat, some pretty good value for Carl. We'll go to mine. Caleb Williams, top of the board. Cooper DeJean, Byron Murphy, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Edrin Cooper. Also, Troy Fatano. I think versatility kind of reigns there in the theme. And then Smoke Dixon. Well, he goes out, gets one of the fastest men at this year's NFL Combine, Nate Wiggins, Lad McConkie, super savvy get there. And then Darius Robinson from Missouri sticking it to Carl a little bit. Boys, I'll, I'll tee you up. Carl, we'll start with you. Whether it's your team or whether it's Smoke's team or my team, is there one pick that really kind of stands out to you that said, you know what, when that name came off the board, man, I really like that. Uh, J.C. Latham. Smoke's pick with J.C. Latham from Alabama. I mean – just one of the great offensive linemen in this draft. And that's where guys sometimes get in trouble because he's a guy you like to have. So where does his value match up? If you wait too late, you can miss him. 
but you also get scared that you don't want to draft him too early, overvalue, but he's a good football player, that would be the guy that sticks out the most to me in terms of getting picked right around there when things can get a little tricky on positional value. Yeah, I'm just surprised that you guys just didn't call my team 4-3-1 or 4-4 team. Because all I'm doing is building a track team that can just run by everybody mm-hmm. and score a touchdown. Well, well, you Throw know, it to them, tackle them, can't cover them in space. Well, right. you know, the thing about that is we not having a track meet. And anybody can run through the forest where there's no animals in it. But when you start putting those lions, tigers, and bears in the middle of that forest, those guys who can run, they typically don't get away. Can't eat, but you can't catch. And I don't think you're catching many of my guys. So it's all right. Smoke, favorite pick? My favorite pick, I'm going to have to say Quinnian Mitchell. Just for the simple fact that you saw a guy that started out, I don't even know where he was ranked, and worked his way up to becoming an NFL first-round draft pick through just hard work, determination, and hard coaching. And shows you the ability, if you do stay, wherever you're at, we will find you. Mm-hmm. And if you even want to level up like Jared Verse, which is, that was good for him, you can find him too. But Quinny Mitchell was my guy. I'm going to go with Jared Verse. I love that pick. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the other one uh, that I'll talk about, Jackson Powers Johnson at number 18, Carl, that you took. And this is a guy that I think, you know, we talk about those players that you feel really good about. I think inside that war room, right, at the NFL draft, that's going to be an exciting one when this guy comes off the board because you know what you got from day one. It's not only a guy that's going to anchor your line of scrimmage, but he's going to be a culture guy too. I mean, he was a big part of what they've done at the University of Oregon. Obviously, that program trending in the right direction under Dan Lanning, but I think this is a day one guy that can make an impact not only on the field but beyond as well. And then Jared Verse, incredible story. I mean, I think uh, one of the most well-rounded players in the NFL draft. Uh, Guys, that is it from Carl Smoke Dixon and myself, Cooper Patagna. Just a quick reminder here on the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel on Monday, the NCAA basketball transfer portal opens. And guess what? We'll have a special episode on March 18th, noon Eastern time to 2 o'clock Eastern time. We'll also have full bracket analysis and breaking transfer portal news. So guys, you can find that on the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. Like I said, for Carl Reed, Smoke Dixon, I'm Cooper Patagna. We'll see you next time.